Let's get into it. Sold Not For Sale podcast. Coach Colin here. Joe Rogan finally comments on Trump's assassination attempt. It was a wild, wild thing for the entire world to see. And Joe Rogan was completely silent about it. Didn't go to Twitter about it. Didn't go to Instagram about it. The next day, same thing. Monday, Tuesday, didn't put out any episodes. Didn't put out an episode last week, Wednesday. Usually makes up for it on, on the Saturday. Nothing. I said either this guy's on vacation or he's preparing for his special that's coming out August 3rd. And I think it's going to be live. Or this guy is somewhere interviewing Trump because Trump's the only person that he would leave his studio for with Jamie and set up somewhere else for Donald Trump, especially after the attempt. But that is not what happened. Joe Rogan pops up interviewing someone named Chad Daniels and gives his opinion on what happened with Trump on that very dark day. Let me uh, play that clip for you, and then I'm gonna break down some things that he actually talks about, as well as show you a little bit about who the photographer is that caught that very iconic photo. So stay tuned for that, and also the BlackRock commercial, break down that a little bit for people, and some other things about Trump ramping up security and the Iranian uh, plot to assassinate Trump. There's a little bit of, uh, you know, so something going on with the Biden administration there, in my opinion. So let's get to it. Come back what they call shell shock back yeah. then. I don't even want to see this, dude. Yeah, this is wild. I don't want to see this. S speaking of which, how about that president? <laughs> how about that Trump fella? <laughs> how crazy is this? Is, is, if there's ever been a real indication that we're in a simulation, it's like this season of USA yeah. is the craziest season that's ever existed. There's so many twists and turns, so many plots, yeah. so many villains, so many incompetent, bumbling fools that you're like, there's no way that lady's a heartbeat away from the president. There's no way. There's no way someone is not telling her to stop saying that same thing over and over again. What can be unburdened by what has been like she just says it over and over and over again this, this isn't real this is writing someone wrote this this it's uh, it seems like a script when a when a president that is giving a speech gets shot in the ear and then stands up and goes full john bender at the end of breakfast club bro he pumps his fist in the air that was a crazy and shit. says fight 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 and when the fucking guy who's a photographer is a wizard that guy who got that photograph find out his name because this guy's award-winning with photographer. the flag above it Yes, yeah. and the angle that he got it, like where he was standing when he took the photo. It's one of the most iconic photos of all time. He had a GoPro on it while he was doing it. So you wow. Move in position to uh, take it. Wow, that's nuts, man. That's nuts. So you could see as the bullets start flying, this fucking dude doesn't even duck. He's still got his camera out. He's right behind Trump, and he's just got his camera out. That is so gangster. I mean, you want to talk about getting a shot no matter what? He's running around. There could be bullets flying his way. I would think you're holding up something black in your hand that's pointed Crazy. at the president. You fucking should get shot. I mean, the Trump story is right out of a movie. And I'm hoping it's not a Stephen King movie. <laughs> came out while we've been recording. Secret Service ramped up security after receiving intel of Iranian plot to assassinate Trump. No known connection to shooting. Oh, they ramped that up and so they ignored the roof 150 yards away? Yeah, it's, there's, is so many, there's so many things where you just go, what the fuck? What the fuck, dude? Yeah. All of it. All of it. And there's so much of it that seems fake, like the the female Secret Service agent that can't holster her weapon. Have you seen this? Mm -mm. She's like moving around all erratically and she tries to holster her weapon. She can't get it in there and she can't figure out how to put it in there. And she stops for a minute and then she just tries back to do it again. And it looks so fake. Is she an actress? No, it looks like an actress. No. Okay. It looks like if you were going to have a bumbling person in a movie, like almost like a comedy of errors or a Coen Brothers movie about an assassination attempt on yeah. a president. You have this lady. Look, here, watch, watch what her gun is. Look, look. She gets her gun out. She tried to put it in there. She couldn't do it. And she's thinking about putting it back in there. She finally gets it in there. Like the whole thing, it's like, look at her, look at her fumbling around. The whole, <laughs> the whole thing is crazy. The erratic movements, no one knows exactly what to do. It seems fake. Yeah, that's an audition I could nail. Yeah, it seems like, 
okay, now you're you're panicking. You don't know what the fuck is going on. You really shouldn't be here. Go. <laughs> you're like, uh, this is, yeah. uh, where do I put my gun? Like it does, you want Secret Service cool, calm, collected, you know, high ready with the gun, scanning the area, looking left and right. Yep. You want them like swift, decisive movements. You don't want to see any of this fucking squirrely trying to put the gun back in. It seems Hank. When you see the Reagan shot, it is yes. just a bunch of people moving dive as on one. Them. They dive on them. Yeah. yeah, bang, dive on them. This seemed, it almost seems like as this simulation gets further and further <laughs> along, yeah. it gets more and more insane. Yeah, look at this. Yeah, they dive. Immediately, they, dive on the guy. they got him. Yeah, immediately. They get his gun immediately. And Reagan survives. Yeah. Which is also crazy. Uh, the, the Trump one is just so nuts, too. Like, if he turns his head at the last second and the bullet grazes his ears, if he didn't, it hits the back of his head and he's dead. And then we fall into chaos and who knows oh, what the fuck happens. Big chaos. And then people think that the Biden administration had Trump killed. And, yeah. And then there's these questions, like, how the fuck does this 20-year-old kid climb on that roof 150 yards away and That's no one wild. sees him? Well, that one guy was pointing at him the whole time. Yes. He's, like, pointing to yes. He's, like, he's right there. And they're yelling, he's got a gun. There's a guy in the prone position on a roof 150 yards away from the former president. The whole thing's nuts. The whole, the whole thing stinks of either incompetence uh, or a design or... We're in the Matrix. <laughs> like, yeah. This is a fucking fake movie. It seems like almost to watch this, the most uh, bombastic and uh, manly of presidents, you know, the, uh, to, for a lack of a better term, to see him with these two female bumbling Secret Service agents, especially the one, to see that, to see everything happen the way it is, to see that they knew this guy was on the roof, the, to hear that that guy had pointed his rifle before that at a cop. So the cop engaged him, he pointed the rifle, and the cop ran away. The guy climbed the roof with a ladder, you can see the ladder. The whole thing is bananas. Yeah, you just... He's 20 years old, and then <laughs> you find out he was in a Black Rock commercial. You're like, <laughs> Am I, is this the Black Mirror? Like, tell me what's going on. Is this real? Is this real? And then Trump goes golfing with a bandage on his that, ear the next day? Yeah. And then the, the putt, when he made the putt. Jesus Did you Christ. hear his quote? No. He said, uh, that's the difference between me and the shooter, I don't miss. <laughs> Like, this isn't That's a his, real person. And then now you have people flooding from the left being like, all right. Yeah. That's a go, good quote. I'll, I'll do this. There's people that are like, okay, he won. Like, they've just given in. They, they're not even going to try to run anybody other than Biden now. They were trying to get Biden out. And now I think they've abandoned that. Oh, well, I don't. I, I wonder if they're doing the old, like, uh, you know, train the boxer as a, as a southpaw. Going on? Yeah, I, just, I read that golf story, too. This is not the first time. There's a lot of golf accounts that put out fake shit. Oh. And that. Jamie, stop ruining our dreams. I just want to. You son of a bitch. That was not <laughs> seemingly real. Jamie plays a lot of golf, and he gets very touchy when it comes to golf, and he calls That's bullshit. Fair. That's fair. It, came, it just came from a Reddit post that people screenshotted. There was no, uh, no pictures, no nothing else. Oh you know, well, touche, young troll. Yeah. Touche. <laughs> happens a lot. <laughs> you got your fucking story mentioned on the podcast. Yeah. That's me. You, sons you can of get me. You can get me very easily. I did read that too. The whole thing's so wild. There's video of the kid um, in the, the Black Rock commercial, and you're like, what? And there's the video of a kid, like, they're, they're saying he's getting bullied in high school, but it doesn't seem like he's being bullied. It seems like everyone's having fun, because he's talking about how he has a 10-inch penis, and they're, they're just filming each other. It yeah. looks like they're having fun. And you're looking like, how is it? How, two years later, this guy tries to kill Trump? Like, what happened? Yeah, you and, and then you find out he was a registered Republican? Like, What? You know high school, those 10-inch dick guys, always getting bullied. <laughs> always he was getting saying bullied. it funny. It was like he's trying to be funny. You know? He's saying, yeah, I got a 10-inch penis. I mean, he wasn't saying, like, I definitely have a 10-inch dick. It was like he's. It didn't seem like he was being bullied. I mean, obviously, I saw one clip. Who knows what the fuck the full context of it is, but... Right. 20? 20 years old? And he's got this, this, this idea, and he pulls it off? He actually gets a shot off and nicks him? Yeah. And then they kill him? Like, you're seeing this 20-year-old kid, the, his life is over. Like, somehow or another, he talked himself into trying to assassinate the president as a lone gunman in Pennsylvania, got on top of a roof, either through sheer incompetence or some other, for some other reason. He actually gets a shot off, and the president just moves his head at the right time. Like, the whole thing is, if it was in a movie, I'd be like, shut the fuck yeah, up. That'll make you believe in God. That's like God's up right. there when he's going like, I don't want to talk to this guy yet. He's a lot. Yeah, I don't want him up ah, here yet. I don't want him. That. I'm the greatest angel. Or maybe he wants 
him here to expose how crazy our political system really is. Because the only way we find out how coordinated everything is, whether you're a Trump fan or not, whether you, even if you hate Trump, put that aside for a second, and just look at how much coordination there is in the media to go after him. And it exposes like this, this thing where you have to step back and go, wait a minute, wh hold on a second. What, what's really going on? Like, what, whether you hate that guy or not, hate him, hate him. Think he's a crook. Hate him. Think he's a liar. Hate him. Don't you think it's weird that they're all in lockstep with the way they talk about him, even with things that aren't true? Like, especially like the Russia collusion hoax that they all talked about for years and years. I thought it was real. I thought, like, he colluded with Russia, and that was, like, the crazy thing about him winning the presidency. Oh, my God, he worked with Russia. Maybe Russia has something on him. You kept hearing about it, right? That was just bullshit. And they went through that for years and years. And then start, you start going, okay, what else is coordinated where everybody is saying, like, how about the Nord Stream pipeline? You know? There we go. Joe Rogan. He ends up getting into a whole talk about the simulation and then he also starts talking about how uh, Trump and Obama went back and forth and Obama says that thing at a speech where he says I'm something you'll never be president and they're just talking about how if Obama didn't do that maybe uh, Trump would have never ran for president which is an interesting theory I think he still would have just because of how things were going uh, you know I mean you could tell especially as Obama got into office and throughout his presidency, you saw that the country was going in a certain path that did not look good. And Trump already knew this is probably something I could win. I know how I would do it. I know all of these guys. Who am I really going to run against? Then he figures out it might be Hillary. He's like, oh, I got hit. Oh, what? Thought it might be like another Obama type. It's Hillary. No problem. I got this. Jeb Bush. Ah, don't even worry about it. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> so let's just get right into it. Uh, let's start at the photographer. The photographer, the photographer uh, I just want to give you guys a closer look at the video Joe was talking about. But then we're going to go into the photographer. This is his name here. Uh, everything but the name is showing. Actually, no, it's showing right there. His name is Evan, Evan Fucci. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Evan, I want to say Fauci. <laughs> not sure. But this guy is a gangster. Exactly like uh, Joe said. Check this out. So this guy just, it goes down. Let me get myself out of the way. It goes down, and Joe's right. He does not stop. He lifts that big camera up. He's pointing. He's taking shot after shot, shot after shot, shot after shot. And if you know anything about this guy, this guy is a very professional photographer. Like, he's well-known. He's been doing this forever, for years, for generations, all sorts of presidents, BLM riots, a lot of the pictures that we know about BLM uh, when everything was going on. Let me get Trump in there. There it is. So he was just taking that. He was taking his. He wasn't playing around. He's like, I'm going to get this photo. And bang, that is the iconic photo as we all know it today. He is the one that got that photo. But after I break down who he is and you hear a little interview from him, because I actually found a little uh, soundbite of him actually talking. He He's built for this type of stuff. He, does, he doesn't play around. So again, this is his Instagram. If you guys want to, oh man, I moved that screen. This is his Instagram. If you guys want to follow him, I'm actually going to say, let me follow this guy. I'm going to follow this guy because he gets some pretty incredible shots. I mean, if we roll through, if you look at all this stuff here, he actually works for AP News, which you can see right there. He actually works for AP News. So he's gotten all sorts of shots. Biden, Trump, he's a jujitsu guy. He's a Waffle House guy. He's a solid dude. Let's go down a little bit. So he's gotten a butt like look at that shot. Look at that shot there. Like this guy has gotten some shots. You see what I mean? What is that? Macron, his wife, Biden, and Jill Biden? Like this guy has gotten some crazy shots. He does this. He, he's a jujitsu guy. Does it with the gi. Look, you got another shot of Trump there. He's gotten Biden with uh whoever one of those tonight show people i don't follow tonight show people anymore i have no idea who's doing what but yeah guys it's like he got he look he got the chin picture he got the chin picture where everybody was questioning what's going on with biden's face like this guy has done some work some real work 
So very interesting stuff. Oh, that's a gangster picture of Trump. Hold on. Let me find that again. Boom. Oh, that's a gangster picture of Trump. Go ahead. Big 47. Big 47 incoming. Just in case you guys didn't know. Let's get a little interview with this guy. He was actually talking about the whole experience. Check this out. Hey, I was photographing uh, former President Trump uh, at a campaign rally here in uh, Butler, Pennsylvania. Uh, over my left shoulder, I heard several several pops, and I, I knew immediately it was gunfire. Uh, from that moment, I, I ran to the stage, and I started photographing the agents on top of them. And then off to my right, I saw uh, the Secret Service counter-assault team arrive. Um, and then I ran to the other side of the stage, and they picked President Trump up. And then as he's uh, walking down the ramp, he, he started fist bumping to the crowd and waving. Um, and he, I, I did notice he had blood coming down his face, as you can see in the photos. Um, the agents took him down the ramp and they put him into an SUV. Uh, and again, as he was getting into the SUV, he also started pumping his fist again. So I'm not sure how long it was from beginning to end, but, um, you know, in my mind, it was it all happened really fast. At the moment I heard the shots being fired, I knew that this was a moment in American history that had to be documented. I mean, it's our, our job as journalists to do this work. Man, solid dude. Solid dude. Definitely a solid follow. I'm going to follow up with this guy quite a bit to see what kind of shots he gets because he's constantly getting amazing shots. Moving on from other stuff that Joe Rogan uh, brought up. He was talking about Iran and their plot and um, security being beefed up based on this plot. Here's the thing, though. When I was looking into this just a little bit. One thing is that the Biden administration actually obtained intelligence about an Iran assassination plot against former President Trump promoting the Secret Service to increase security around him. Here's the thing, right? Going to a little 4D chess. Biden administration is saying, hey, you know, we just got word that Iran wants to do something to him. Yeah, so if anything happens, just so you know, it's Iran. Yeah, how about that? I know. I know. Yeah, it's them for sure. And it becomes very believable because Trump did, uh, I think he hit him with a drone or a, a missile, a drone, a shot a missile, I'm not sure. But either way, he took out one of these top generals in Iran. He was a very respected general. There was a lot of people that were unhappy with him. So maybe they actually do want revenge. But I find it just a little convenient that around this time, the Biden administration is like, oh, we just found something out here. Here's some info. Just so you know, no need to look anywhere else. If anything happens that that's just me. I, I don't know that I believe that exactly. But here's a little bit of CNN actually talking about this whole thing with the beefing up of security and the assassination att attempt on Trump. We do have some breaking news here, Boris. We are of course, I'm listening to it that fast. You guys know me. Let's slow it down learning of a plot to assassinate former President Trump, a plot with no known connection to Saturday's assassination attempt, I should mention. That's obviously very nos uh, noteworthy. Let's bring in senior justice correspondent Evan Perez for the details on this. Evan, what do you know? Well, Brianna, in recent weeks, the, the U.S. government received uh, intelligence from a human source uh, that indicated that the Iranians were plotting to try to kill uh, former President Donald Trump. Now, that led immediately to an increase in the protection for the former president. We heard over the weekend from the Secret Service that in recent weeks they had increased uh, their protection for the former president. And so the question was exactly why. We now know that this is the reason why. It was specific intelligence that was deemed to be credible enough, and that's the reason why they increased uh, the protection for the former president. It's very important to point out that uh, there is nothing to indicate at this point, uh, in part of this investigation of the, of the events on Saturday, that uh, the shooter, the, the would-be assassin, uh, that uh, tried to, to assassinate the former president on Saturday. There's no indication that it had anything to do with this Iranian plot. It appears to be a coincidence, obviously. But it is one of those things that is raising new questions, I think, for uh, the Secret Service and, and, and for everybody involved in the protection of Donald Trump, uh, how it was that these events 
uh, took place as they did on Saturday. How did someone, this 20-year-old uh, person, uh, get onto that roof, uh, again, knowing that they had this intelligence, the Secret Service was aware of this intelligence, and, and they had taken, obviously, some additional steps. But how did that person get on a roof and be able to fire off these shots uh, that almost uh, killed uh, Donald Trump. Those are very, very big, important questions that you're going to have, Secret Service are going to have to answer uh, in the coming weeks. And then the other. Huh. Just a quick question here. Let me just a uh, quick question. I'm just going to ask, how do you become Secret Service U.S.? Oops, I brought up something completely different. Wow. What did I just do? I want to know how you become a Secret Service agent in, in the, the United States of America. How does that work? I always thought they were ex FBI, ex CIA, or, you know, maybe not even ex, but they're just kind of taking an adjacent step. That's always what I thought it was. Okay, apparently not. Special agents positions. So they definitely have a correlation with those people. I'll get into why I think that in a minute, because, you know, when people are asking what if, if this is orchestrated by Trump, you really have to remember how many people Trump has pissed off during his administration. And even from the day he announced he was going to be running for president, how many people got really ticked off? Now, what are we going to jump into next? We're going to jump into the whole Secret Service thing since I'm talking about it already. <laughs> I don't know if you guys knew this, right? Joe Rogan's talking about this lady here. Oh, let me click here. Joe Rogan's talking about this woman. <laughs> and she's jostling around with her gun in the holster and everything. Here, my big head's in the way. Let me get my big head out of the way. She's jostling around there. Take a look at what happened. Oh. Take a look at what happened. Oh. And the reason that they're showing that clip in this uh, post is because you can hear one of them, one of those ladies, screaming, what are we doing? What are we doing? When all you're supposed to do is get on top of Trump. And then there's also an image of one of the female Secret Service people. While the men are jumping on Trump, she is ducking behind all of them. So that's not good. Now, I've there's a reason for this. They've actually have some DEI issues. Surprise. Let's get into it. Percent women recruits by 2030 and even allowed YouTube influencer Michelle Carey to train with agents. But I'm very conscious uh, as uh, as I sit in this chair now of making sure that we need to uh, attract diverse candidates and ensure that we are developing and giving opportunities to everybody in our workforce um, and particularly women. To expand hiring, they're aiming to have 30% women recruits by 2030. <sighs> well, there you go. Head of the Secret Service is aiming to have 30% women by 2030. Again, DEI, and I'm saying this as a black person, DEI is not good. When you think about it like this, you know, right away you might think like, oh, I'm, maybe I'm racist, uh, sexist, whatever. No, I'm not. But if there is a guy who is six foot five and 240 pounds and he is trained in hand to hand combat, he's an ex U.S. Navy SEAL and he's been to four different deployments, has a purple heart. If that guy's standing there and you're going, well, we have to be conscious now and there's a woman who wants the position and. Yeah, she's five foot six and, you know, she's 110 pounds, but she can do the job just as well. When you're getting to that place, you're making big mistakes. And Trump was actually aware of this because in his first appearance at RNC, he was surrounded by tall men, men that were all either his height or taller surrounded Trump as he came out for the first time as he was wearing his ear bandage. I'll show you some of that as well. But I just wanted to show you that that's what's going on if you're wondering how all of that took place. I'm going to move on and jump on to the 
the Black Rock commercial that the kid was in. I'm just going to go Trump RNC really quick. Just in case you guys didn't get to see it. Let's see Trump doing his walkout. Oh, is this day two? Oh, this is new. Oh, maybe I should show this to you guys. Are they are they showing the whole thing? Oh, they are. Oh, this was the one. Okay, let's show this. Sorry, guys. Let me throw this up. So, just like I said, nice. just some big men. And of course, everybody now trained on that right ear and the bandage over his ear. It's just tall men around Trump now. His first appearance. I will say I made a video about this just talking about how different he seems. You can tell that there's a bit of emotion in him. He's talked about unifying the country. He's gotten a check from his mortality. And, you know, that's always a huge thing to have happen. Obviously, he's had that, you know, check in mortality before. His father's passed away. I'm not sure if his mother's still around. But, you know, you know, J JFK Jr. was his good friend. So he's had that check from people around him. He cares about passing away. But this is the first time that we know about that somebody's actually taken a shot at him. So we're starting to see someone a little different. And you're seeing a lot of emotion well up. The crowd starts yelling, fight, 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 as he did. And there's just a whole bunch of emotion. You know, I think it's amazing that you see his sons there. His All his kids are there. I'm not sure if Ivanka's there. I'm not 100% sure. I would assume so. But you see him walk up. And the first person, I don't know if this is the same video. But they, yeah, first person that he sees, Tucker Carlson. I thought that was interesting because they were like, oh, he's just around Republican royalty. Oh, no, this is a different. OK, this is day two. So Tucker Carlson's not there today. It's just his kids. I believe that's Huckabee, Marjorie Taylor Greene there. And of course, his new VP pick, J.D. Vance. I don't know how you guys feel about that. I was a little disappointed. I wanted to see straight up. I wanted to see Vivek. I really wanted to see Vivek take that spot. But this is uh, Trump appearing another time. I'm really happy that he's okay. He has the bandage on, of course. Some deranged leftists are saying that the bandage is too... The, some leftists are saying that the bandage is just uncalled for as they muffle it through their mask that they're still wearing. It's just ridiculous. Let's move on to the Blackwater commercial that Joe was talking about. I'm going to pinpoint the spot. I'm pretty sure I know where it was. Let's find him. This is a BlackRock commercial. Come on. There he is. Boom. There he is. So he's in the commercial. A lot of people, even Joe, are thinking that this is very odd, right? That it's extremely odd that he's in this commercial. I don't know if it's that odd. I think it's, I think it's a massive coincidence, but I myself, as you guys know, I've done a lot of filming in my time. I've done everything from movies to YouTube videos to podcast production to actually being in schools when I have friends who are giving speeches at schools and I've had to interview kids. I've had to make B-roll like this and it's, it's, not, it's not really that crazy. You know, I think it's just the fact that it's Blackwater, but let's just watch the commercial just so you get a feel for it's it. Brian DeLalo. I teach AP and honors economics in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Financial well-being to me is knowing that I can be free to do the things that I love to do. So basically, BlackRock manages retirement plan assets over a third of the U.S. public school teachers. Huh. Wow. Uh, <laughs> that's scary. Homeschool your kids, right? But this is basically giving that teacher some shine. So if he goes to that school, it's not unlikely that this kid's going to be in the video. Here's why. And I've done this before. When you have to go to a school, you go to the kids who are the oldest. Because the kids who are the oldest, who are in their last year, they don't have to consent with their parents. They can just look at you and say, I consent to being on video. And then you can film them. You can do B-roll. You can do interviews. Anyone who's under that, you have to get consent from parents and they have to come in and there's forms that have to be filled out. So the thing about that is, I don't know if people are thinking he's a BlackRock actor. You know, if he was getting paid, this kid for sure didn't get paid. Okay, just that's just straight off the bat. And he's obviously not an actor. 
You know, I just I I don't know. To me, it doesn't seem all that crazy, but that's because I've been exposed to the film industry so much. I've seen it so much that it's just like, I don't know. Like, I, I guess I guess it's a weird occurrence. Well, let me tell you something. If that says 33 beside him, was that is that a 33 or a 93 right there? Is that a 33 or 93? Oh, good Lord. If that's a 33, now scrap everything I just said. <laughs> if that's 33, never mind what I said. Put it all aside. This is crazy if that's a 33. Um, if you don't know 33, the symbolism there, it's something that pops up quite a bit when certain activities come up in the world. Let's move on to Chuck Schumer. Now, this is to the people who think that Trump ha somehow orchestrated this whole thing. Now, I do think it's an assassination attempt. There has to be some orchestrating. It can't just be one kid just ran up there. He just went, and he just got up there and he's like, oh, I'm going to do it. Maybe it was, maybe he got lucky. Maybe he was a dumb kid and he's like, I can just climb there and be fine. And somehow this, uh, the Secret Service was like, I guess we're all good. I don't know. But you got to remember, Trump pissed off a lot of people during his presidency. This is Chuck Schumer in 2017. This this clip is iconic. I don't even think some people register how iconic this clip is. But listen to Chuck Schumer. He's taking these shots, this antagonism, yep. this taunting to the intelligence Let me tell community. You, you take on the intelligence community. They have six ways from Sunday at getting back at you. So even for a practical, supposedly hard-nosed businessman, he's being really dumb to do this. What do you think the intelligence community would do if they were motivated I don't know, to? but I, from what I am told, they are very upset with how he has treated them and talked about them. And we need the intelligence community. We don't know what's going Look at the Russian hacking. He's taking these... Look at the Russian hacking. Wow, he was. Just, that's just straight propaganda out of that man's mouth. Isn't that wild? So that's 2017 he said that. Here's the thing about this interview that I think a lot of people don't pick up on. The reason that he's talking about Trump in this clip is because Rachel Maddow, someone who gets paid in the seven or eight figure range, who has to take her job very seriously, for some reason has her phone sitting here. Let me tell you something. I haven't even broken 200,000 subscribers. I do not have my phone here. You will not see the phone here. I don't do that. I have notes. I have things that I write down as I'm listening to things. My phone is not here. It's off. It's it's not even close to me. For some reason, Rachel Maddow thinks to have her phone there. And randomly, before the interview is done, just as they're near wrapping up, she goes, oh, and Trump just said this. And then she has her notifications turned on for Donald Trump. Not out of the question, you know, she's in the news sphere. But then she looks at it and actually reads the tweet that she just got a notification about. I'm sorry. That, to me, is completely set up so Chuck Schumer could say this on national television to send Donald Trump a message. That's exactly what I think. Because if you notice, right after he says it, he looks at the camera. It's crazy. <laughs> What are you looking at? What are you looking at us for, Chuck? What are you doing? You don't look at the camera, you wild man. <laughs> that was meant to send a message to Trump. You have to remember, the people who think it's like something that Trump put on himself, he pissed off the FBI, CIA, NSA, uh, the defense contractors when he went on record on national television talking about how they don't like the fact that he won't start wars. They're like, they, they don't make money under me. And he actually brought up the military industrial complex. Pretty wild stuff for him to do while he's president. And then on top of that, he recently announced that he's going to stop funding Ukraine if he's reelected. He's going to make, he's going to want to make peace between Israel and Palestine. So possibly stopping aid, possibly upsetting Israel there. We have a lot of big people that he's, the whole Democratic Party, the Biden administration, a lot of people in the Republican Party, this guy has upset everyone you could upset within Washington, whether it's front and center, behind in the shadows, whatever you want to say. He annoyed all of them. So for people to think that this is somehow something that he put together, you know, I just think that's just crazy. And believe me, I'm playing 5D chess all day. I'm wearing a tinfoil Speedo right now. You guys know I don't take off my... My tinfoil speedo. It goes on every single day. So 
that's just me. When I know that he's done all these things, I understand that there's probably going to be some people that want to take him out. And then that's also me saying there's a lot of wild leftists that would want to take him out as well. Do I think that kid worked alone? Do I think that? I, I don't think so. That's just me. I have no proof other than the things I just said. But I don't know that that kid was just working by himself. Plus, there was a guy screaming the whole time saying that, hey, hey, he has a gun. He has a gun. There's a guy pointing the entire time screaming that at the top of his lungs. He said he was just pointing. He said he was just looking at police yelling. This guy has a gun and no one Trump shooter bystander. And also condolences to the family of the uh, fireman who, wow, he's right there. He's right there too. Yeah, this guy. I didn't even mean to pull that up. Yeah, condolences to that guy. So sad, man. Now that I have a kid, I know that's a sad. I know that's a sad. It's it's always sad when someone loses their life like that. But now that I have a kid, I'm like, oh my god, it's it's so sad. It's just so sad. Crazy, absolutely crazy. But let's just check this out. I just want to see if I can find this guy telling the story again. Because if you haven't seen that guy tell the story, there he is, perfect. Let's pull this up. We could hear him. So we walked up and probably up, watched and listened to the rally. Right, we couldn't see him, but we could hear him. So we walked up and probably five to seven minutes of Trump speaking. I'm estimating here. I have no idea, you know, but um, we noticed the guy crawling arm, you know, bear crawling up the roof of the building beside us, 50, 50 feet away from us. So we're standing there, you know, we're pointing, we're pointing at the guy crawling up the roof. And he had a gun, right? He had a rifle. A rifle. We could clearly see him with a rifle. Absolutely. Um, we're pointing at him. The police are down there running around on the ground. We're like, hey, man, there's a guy on the roof with a rifle. And the police were like, huh, what? You know, like, like they didn't know what was going on. You know, we're like, hey, right here on the roof. We can see him from right here. We see him. You know, he's, he's crawling. And next thing you know, I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, why is Trump still speaking? Why have they not pulled him off the stage? I'm standing there pointing at him for you know, two, three minutes, Secret Service is looking at us from the top of the barn. I'm pointing at that roof, just standing there like this. And next thing you know, five shots ring out. So you're, you're certain that the shots came from that guy on the roof? A hundred percent. hundred percent. And he, he was up there for a couple of minutes. He was up you there. You saw him up there for a couple of minutes. Absolutely. At least three to four were, minutes. And you were telling yep. the police and the Secret Service? We were telling the police. We were pointing at him for the Secret Service who were looking at us from the top of the barn. They were looking at us the whole time when we were standing by that tree. Could they see Binoculars. Him? Could they see him? Probably not because the roof, the way the, the slope went, he was behind where they could see. But, but why is there not Secret Service on all of these roofs here? I mean, this is not a big place. Did you see, I mean, obviously everyone, when the shooting started, everyone was very panicked. Did, oh, you, I, did you see what happened to him at all? Oh, yeah, they blew his head off. You, okay, sorry. Secret Service did, blew his head off. Okay, we just be careful. So, yeah. So that happened. So apparently, and let me just make sure that I'm correct in saying this. I just want to replay this. We do have some breaking news here, Boris. We are learning of a plot to assassinate former President Trump, a plot with no known connection to Saturday's assassination attempt, I should mention. That's obviously very news, uh, noteworthy. Let's bring in senior justice correspondent Evan Perez for the details on this. Evan, what do you know? Well, Brianna, in recent weeks, the, the U.S. government received uh, intelligence from a human source uh, that indicated that the Iranians were... Okay, so in recent weeks, they got this notification and then this guy's story was still able to happen where he saw somebody on the roof. They said that they beefed it up, but they didn't beef it up to the extent to have everybody on a roof or at least go through a building, at least check the roofs. Like, I don't know. I just think that's very interesting. Again, that's why I looked up. How do you become Secret Service? Because I figure that the Secret Service is directly linked to the current administration and that they're all X from some kind of agency. And I guess there is an ability to just apply directly for them. I'm guessing that it's made up of a little bit of everything of what I just said. So Trump upset a lot of people. And I will just comment on Rogan right before I leave. Rogan did comment on the whole thing. I'm hoping 
Yeah, and you know, I, I can't say that Rogan should support anybody. I can't say that, because what if he doesn't? He says he's an old-school lefty. Old-school lefty's going for RFK Jr., of course. That's just how it's going to be. I can't, I can't dictate who Joe supports and everything, but I would think after this, after this incredible, wild situation, that he would be a little more supportive of the president, of the, you know, Donald Trump. But, you know, again, I, I can't I can't make him do that. I just I just find it interesting that he's not, you know, find it very interesting. Let's not forget that iconic photo, ladies and gentlemen, like subscribe, turn on the notifications. And other than that, I'm out.